Hello my Trekkies and welcome back to another Rocket Lab Saturday with me, Stock Trek Girl. And this Rocket Lab Saturday is going to be really fun because we are going beyond the company of Rocket Lab looking at the man, Peter Beck. Now, Peter Beck is the founder and CEO of Rocket Lab in case you didn't already know that. So we will be uncovering the journey of Rocket Lab, how it began, you know, what inspired Peter Beck to start this company, what makes him the man to run this company, and where does he plan to take Rocket Lab? So let's get started. has true grit in that he doesn't give up. So it all started off at a young age. He had been interested in aerospace and rockets. And in fact, he skipped college, you know, what most parents tell their children not to do. So when Peter Beck turned 18, he the, the reason he decided not to go to college is because there wasn't any around him that taught how to build rockets. So there they, they couldn't teach him anything of his interest. So he, basically had to carve his own way. He built a rocket powered bicycle that could go 90 miles per hour. And the reason he did this is initially, he didn't plan on starting a rocket company. He just wanted to work for one. So he took a pilgrimage to the United States of America and he visited places, you know, probably Boeing and whatnot. And he wanted to work for a rocket company. Here's the thing, unfortunately, him being a foreigner, not having a college degree, they weren't very receptive. Can you imagine in the US? Hmm, go figure. So what he did was on his plane ride back, he thought, you know what? I'm gonna do my own thing. I'm gonna stop relying on people to accept me and I'm gonna do something on my own. And that's when he literally drew the logo for Rocket Lab on the airplane on a napkin. Can you believe that? Rocket Lab just started off of basically rejection, like most companies that are very successful do. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing how someone can be rejected so many times and yet start up a company. Like take uh, Jack Ma in China, you know, that, that, billionaire Chinese uh, businessman. Uh, well, he tried to get a job everywhere, right? He probably tried from McDonald's to whatever over there in China and nobody would hire him. So you know what he did? He started his own company and then he became a billionaire. So just remember that rejection can only open doors to better opportunities. I think we all need to take a lesson from this. So getting back on track, it inspired Peter Beck to do his own thing. So from then on, he thought, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna found Rocket Lab. So Rocket Lab was started in 2006. And thank goodness for that, because if Peter Beck would have gotten a job at like Boeing or Lockheed Martin or something, we wouldn't have Rocket Lab. Can you imagine that? Thank goodness they, they didn't see the genius that he was because, you know, we would be missing out. Um, <laughs> so, you know, he, he's a very brilliant man. He's not a quitter. And I like that about him. He has grit. And let me tell you what, you know what makes success? Grit. Successful people don't give up. They, they, they innovate and they carve their own path. They are pioneers. And Peter Beck is a space pioneer. Now, Peter Beck, he knew that his vision was to get the small satellites up into space, to, to, to not just have space available to only one or two launch uh, companies, he wanted to democratize it. He wanted to make the space launch a democracy. And the way to do it was to create Electron. So here we have Electron Rocket, right? And this is one of the things I, I think is really hilarious because Peter Beck, he wasn't, you know, he, 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 he's not 
slow moving. He likes to get things done at a very fast pace. So he wanted to get these small satellites up. He wasn't even really thinking about reusability in the beginning. He just knew he wanted to get these rockets going. So he said, oh, you know, reusability, I'll eat my hat if we end up doing something like that. Well, guess what? Reusability happened, right? It happened with the helicopter catch and, and all that. And you know what happened? He also had to eat his hat because of it. Yeah. So let's go ahead and watch that clip because it never gets old. I love watching Peter Beck's face when he eats the hat. So let's go take a look. There's a lot of things at Rocket Lab that we said we were going to do that we've done. And a few things at Rocket Lab that we said we would never do, which we have also done. So I really think with this project, it's about time I finally ate the hat. His hat is not tasty. I don't know. I don't know what he's going to end up blending next time. He he kind of said that, you know, Neutron was as big as they would go, but I have a feeling they might end up going bigger one day and creating a large lift rocket. He may not see it now, <laughs> but whether it's five years down the road or 10 years down the road, I really think one day Rocket Lab is going to build a heavy lift rocket and we're going to have to do something a little bit bigger than a hat, maybe like a t-shirt. Maybe the shoes, blend up some leather shoes, something. I'm sure we'll think of something for him to put in that blender. <laughs> now, you know, think about it. In founding Rocket Lab, he didn't even give up because think about it, he's doing a startup from New Zealand, right? So imagine the amount of capital he would need. Imagine the amount of trust he would need from people. You know, can you imagine Peter Beck going to Silicon Valley, you know, knocking on their door, asking for money to fund a rocket startup, which he did, you know, he was asking for about $5 million uh, from Silicon Valley. And they're probably thinking, why are we gonna invest in a foreigner who doesn't have a college degree? You know, you know how people are, very judgmental. But Peter Beck, he didn't care. He went out there, he got a little bit of, you know, funding and, you know, whatnot, and, and he did it, he started it. And he was successful at it. And he never gave up. Again, key takeaway. So Peter Beck met one of the first investors in Rocket Lab at an aerospace conference in Los Angeles. And what's really funny is this guy's last name is Rocket. So, so the guy that invested in Rocket Lab from the very beginning had such an interesting uh, last name. He, he legally changed his last name to Rocket. He was so interested in space. And he was also from New Zealand and was a tech entrepreneur. So he helped give seed money for Rocket Lab because he saw the brilliance and technical capabilities in Peter Beck and this company. So I, I always think that's such a fun story and that Rocket Lab is literally founded by Rocket Man. I mean, I mean it, it doesn't get any more ironic than that. So, and here's the thing, the, the rocket man that helped invest into Rocket Lab, well, he left uh, the company in 2011, I believe, to, to found his own space thing. Uh, a decision which he regrets to this day, obviously, seeing how successful Peter Beck has made Rocket Lab. Um, obviously, we haven't heard much from the other rocket man, so I can only assume his company isn't doing that great. Another interesting fact that I like about Peter Beck is that he admits, you know, some of his faults and his weaknesses. You know, he shows his humanity. Not only is he brilliant, but he's also humble. You know, each time Rocket Lab does a launch, he's nervous. And can you blame him? When you're launching someone else's product on your product, and that product is worth a lot of money, <laughs> And, and your staff is dependent on you to make sure that this ends in, in, in a successful mission. Otherwise, it'll negatively impact the company and your employees. Can you imagine the pressure that must put on somebody? So he is capable of working under pressure. And I'm sure even after 40 successful launches, he probably still gets nervous. And I would too, probably. But the thing is, is that he shows strength and fortitude even though Rocket Lab has been extremely successful, 
And those are wonderful characteristics in a leader. Strength, fortitude, humility, you know, admitting one's mistakes. Those things make a very well-rounded person. And I, I like his character. And I think that that's important when it comes to looking at companies. You need to not just look at the company. I think a lot of people look at companies, you know, like, like, you know, and this is going off topic, but you know, maybe like Lockheed Martin or Ball Aerospace or SpaceX or whatever. And well, I'm not gonna put SpaceX in there, but a lot of people look at companies and they don't look at the people behind the companies. They just look at the name, right? They just look at the name. Like when you think of McDonald's, you think of McDonald's. When you think of Disney, you think of Disney. When you think, you're just thinking of the name. But when people think of Rocket Lab, they also need to think of Peter Beck and the person behind it because that's what's making Rocket Lab possible and that's what built it. And that's why we even have Rocket Lab is because Peter Beck decided not to go to college and he didn't get accepted by, you know, any of the other people for internships in the United States. So we need to keep in mind the man behind the company. We need to understand his vision, especially as an investor. We need to know what does he want to do for Rocket Lab? Where does he want to take it? So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things he said regarding Rocket Lab's future. So the bit that I'm really excited about uh, within Rocket Lab is, is, you know, the launch part of our company is very, uh, very well structured and uh, every 24 days a launch vehicle comes off the production line. So the bit that we're focusing the most amount of effort on right now is, uh, you know, it is our space systems division. So the space systems uh, division is, is really satellites. Um, so that there's a huge amount of effort going in, into growing that division. We recently made uh, a substantial acquisition and, um, you know, being able to provide launch and also being able to, to build spacecraft and provide the spacecraft element is, is really transformational for the whole industry. Are you right? Of course. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, where I, I would say Rocket Lab is about 30% where I want it to be done. So um, there, is a, there is a lot more work uh, yet to occur. Highlight in this article um, by Emerging Tech Brew. Now, Peter Beck is talking about some future possibilities and plans and things that are already implemented currently. So right now, uh, Peter Beck said they're starting to see a contraction of available small rockets. They're seeing an increase in launch bookings for electron launches in 2023 and beyond from new and returning customers across both government and commercial sectors. Now, it also gets interesting because it goes on to say, that uh, Rocket Lab continues to invest in the medium-sized Neutron rocket, which is scheduled to launch in 2024 and is designed for mega constellation deployment, deep space missions, and human space flight. So Rocket Lab's next vision for the future is around these three things, mega constellation deployment, deep space missions, and human space flight. Now, I got to tell you, when Rocket Lab becomes capable of doing human space flight, I'm going to have to do something. And it's not going to be eating my hat or anything like that. I'm going to have to come up with, um, with something to do because, I mean, to, to see Rocket Lab put a human in space, that's going to be, that's going to be an amazing milestone. So I got to do something big for that. If you got any ideas on what you all want me to do within reason, if well when rocket lab puts a human into space um put some ideas in the comment box below and i will take them into consideration um something for me to do when rocket lab becomes human spaceflight capable so peter beck continue to say that uh, small launches are a nice little niche market and electron will probably continue to do well there but he called the medium and large launch market a very different environment. So again, this tells me Rocket Lab is looking towards the future. They're looking towards innovating their launch vehicles. Again, they're starting with Neutron. And, you know, Peter Beck won't admit it, but I really think one day he's going to build a large lift rocket. I really do. Mark my words, folks. He'll probably say no up and down the street right now, but I think one day he's going to do it. 
and we are going to make him eat something, whether it be his shirt or his shoes. It's got to be something. And if you've enjoyed learning more about Rocket Lab's Peter Beck and you want to know more Rocket Lab goodness every Saturday, be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell as well so you're notified every time I post a video. So sometimes, even though it says Rocket Lab Saturday, it might not get out till Saturday night because I do have a very busy schedule and I am going to try to work on that, on, on putting out the videos earlier on Saturday, but as of lately, they have been going out more so like Saturday night. So I apologize about that and I'll be working on getting them out earlier on Saturday during the day. So until next time, invest long and prosper. <laughs>